Albright, good morning class. We're just going to finish book four for those classes who haven't. Um, so our next question in book four is question 92A, and it's an exam one question, so it means we need to do this question tech-free. So the question asks us to solve sine of theta equals um, sine five, theta on, uh, five, five pi on seven for theta element of r. Okay, so what we're looking for is all the angles that will produce a y-coordinate equal to the y-coordinate that we get from sine of 5 pi on 7. So let's draw the situation out so we understand what's happening. So we'll draw a unit circle and let's draw what we know. We know that we can draw the angle sine of 5 pi on 7. We know that 7 pi on 7 would lie right here. So 5 pi on 7 is 2 pi on 7 less than 5 pi on 7. So let's draw that now. So this angle here is 2 pi on 7. The name of this angle is 5 pi on 7. And we know that sine of 5 pi on 7 is this length here. So this length here is the y coordinate that goes with an angle of 5 pi on 7. So we call that sine of 5 pi on 7. So our goal is to find all angles theta that will produce a y coordinate of that same height. So we can see using symmetry that there will also be a positive y coordinate with that same height sine of 5 pi on 7 over here with the angle 2 pi on 7 there. All right, so the name of this angle is 2 pi on 7. The name of this angle is 5 pi on 7. And we know that in one circle of the unit circle, we would have the following two solutions for theta. Theta is either equal to 2 pi on 7. That produces a y coordinate that's the height of sine pi on, uh, 5 pi on 7. Or theta is equal to 5 pi on 7. If we cycle around the unit circle, there are no other solutions in one rotation. However, if we take this angle and we add a 360 degree angle to it, or two pi radians to it, we would also land at this coordinate p, and we would also produce the same y height, you can see with symmetry. Likewise, I could add um, two 360 degrees, and I'd still land on two pi on seven, that same location, and I'd still get the same height. I could add infinite, 360 degrees and I would still land at that same height. So we can add one 360 or two pi radians times n, where n has to be an integer. As long as n is an integer, we're doing full 360s. We can also land on this spot and we can add um, 360 degrees to that spot and we will still get that same y coordinate sine of 5 pi on 7. So we can do the same thing over here and this gives us our general solution. We need to solve in general because we have no restrictions on the angles theta could take. And that's the solution to this problem. We've already got theta isolated so theta is either 2 pi on 7 plus 2 pi n or theta is equal to 5 pi on 7 plus 2 pi n where n has to be an integer. All right, so we're going to move on now to looking at combined trig equations. So this is when we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing um, individual trig equations to get um, a combined function. So these questions are, uh, are always tech active, but it does help to know how to find the period without having to look at a graph and just sort of eyeball it and guess. So if you do have a combined trig, trig function, the domain of the whole function is going to be equal to the lowest common multiple of the separate periods of the individual functions. So if we want the period of the combined function, we look at the period of each of the individual functions, and then we look at the, the lowest common multiple between them. So let's do some practices of this. This is a graph that we would never be expected to draw tech-free. This happens to be the graph of this function here, which you can see is a combined trig function. So we've got the graph of y equals sine 3x minus cosine of x plus pi on 4. Um, and it's already telling us what the period is, but how did we work that out? Well, let's look at the periods of the individual functions. So starting with sine of 3x, I'll do that one here. The period of sine 3x is 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 3 in this case, so 2 pi on 3. Now let's look at the period of the cosine function. So the period of the cosine function is um, 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which in this case is an imaginary one, so 1. So we've got the period 2 pi on 3 and the period 2 pi, and to find the combined 
the combined period, we're looking for the lowest common multiple between them. So that means we need to multiply each of them by a whole integer and look at the lowest common um, value we can get. You can see if you multiply 2 pi on 3 by the integer 3, you would get 2 pi. So over here, I'm going to do the lowest common multiple. That would get you 2, two pi. And this one's period is 2 pi. And we know we can multiply 2 pi by 1 to get 2 pi. So the lowest common multiple is 2 pi. So the period of that function is 2 pi. And if you examine that graph carefully, for example, between two of the peaks, you can see they don't happen at really nice, a really nice scale. So if you were eyeballing this, you could say, oh, it looks like approximately 2 pi, because this happens a little bit right here. And if you count, counted it over, um, it would look like about 2 pi. But to be sure, it's nice to have the algebraic technique of um, looking for the lowest common multiple between the individual functions to find the exact, exact period. So let's try another example of that. Let's try, um, let's try question 94. So here we're instructed, it says it's an exam one question, and it's not asking us to graph this function. That wouldn't be fair tech, uh, tech free. It, it's asking us to find the period of this function that's described by this equation here. So the equation is y equals cosine 6x plus sine of 4x. So we can see that this function is made up of two simple trig functions. So we've got cosine of 6x and sine of 4x. So to find the period, we're looking for the lowest common multiple of the separate periods. So I'm going to look for the period of cosine of 6x first. The period of this function is going to be 2 pi divided by the coefficient in front of the x, which is a 6 in this case, so it's going to be pi on 3. Um, looking at the sine function, we've got, I'll do this one in orange. So the period of the sine function is, get my orange back, um, the period of the sine function is going to be, the period is 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 4. So we get pi on 2. We're looking for the lowest common multiple between pi on 3 and pi on 2. So we're looking for the, um, we're looking for an integer to multiply by each of those values to arrive at the same final value. And you can see we could multiply pi on 3 times 3, and we would get pi. We can multiply pi on 2 by 2, and we would get pi. So our lowest common multiple is pi. So therefore, the period of this function is equal to pi. All right, let's try one more of those equations. So let's look at. Um, let's look at this one here. Let's look at question 96. This says it's an exam two problem, so we can use our CAS for this, this question. So the first instruction is on the axis below, sketch the graph of y equals 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x between 0 and 4 pi. So um, I'm going to sketch this on the CAS and use the CAS to help me. But before I do that, I'm going to work out the period because to draw a nice graph on the CAS, we need a nice x scale. And the x scale um, relates to the period. So let's do that now. Let's find the period before actually graphing it. This one's quite simple because we haven't had any dilations from the y-axis. You can see um, that's a 1 and that's a 1x. So we know the period of the, the sine graph is 2 pi. The period is 2 pi, and we know the period of the cosine graph is also 2 pi. That means the period of the whole function is still just 2 pi, OK? So to get a nice x scale for this graph, for your scale, you're going to find the intervals that this graph happens in. And sine and cosine graphs happen in perfect little chunks of 4 because of the 4 quadrants on the unit circle. So our intervals are going to be take the period, divide it by 4, and that gives me pi on 2. So I'm going to pick an x scale of pi on 2 on my graph. So let's look at that now. Let's go to our CAS. If you've got your CAS and you want to follow along, um, let's see. Just got to find my CAS. It's back here. OK. All right, so we're, we're going to try and graph this. So this is the graph of well, 3 sine x plus 4 cos x between 0 and 4 pi. All right, so looking for my CAS, back to my CAS. So we've got 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x and we want to draw that only between 0 and pi I believe. So we'll put a little bar to set our domain. So between 0 and 
um, 0 and pi. All right. Now let's change our scale a little bit. So we'll go with, was, hopefully I got that domain right. Yeah, oh, so zero, 0 and 4 pi, rather. That's my fault. So 0 and 4 pi is what we wanted. I'll just try and change that now. Um, so we'll delete that graph. 0 to 4 pi. There we go. OK. Now let's check our um, let's just check our window settings, and we're going to change our scale to pi's on twos. So for the minimum, we just need to see between zero and four pi. So I'm going to just change that. Um, let's go with the x scale, change it to our intervals that we that we would prefer. So let's go to pi on twos for those. So pi divided by two. Um, for our minimum, let's go um, let's go negative. Uh, negative 6 and here we'll just go 6 we'll go by 1's on our y-axis all right now here's our graph um, so if you are able to transcribe that and put that on to your uh, draw that onto your document um, that would be excellent so you just need to transcribe this graph we can see um, let's see if we can average it the period. So we said the period was 2 pi. There's pi on 2. There's a maximum right there. So let's look at how long it takes to get to its next maximum. Pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi. So we're looking for from here to here. Um, you should find that the period is 2 pi, which is what we found with our combined trig function. So hopping back here, um, hence state, state the amplitude and the period of y. So we've got our period, it's 2 pi. We found that algebraically. We didn't need to look at the graph, but for the amplitude, we're going to um, we're gonna look at our graph for that. So if we head back to our CAS, um, we're looking here. You can see it goes up to a height of 5, and it goes down to um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It also goes down 5. As soon as your lows are the same magnitude as your highs, that means your amplitude is that value. So you can see your high is positive 5, your low is negative 5, um, and that then means your amplitude is 5. So we had to look at the graph to observe the amplitude because that's not a standard trig graph. So the amplitude by observation from the graph was 5. So therefore amplitude is 5, and the period, which we found algebraically using our understanding of combined um, trig function, was 2 pi.